You're listening to the Dental Zone podcast. I'm Dr. Rachel Hall. This is the place that supports you to understand your dental issues, the causes and how to prevent them, empowering each individual to get the most out of life while bearing a stunning smile. Hello, I'm Dr. Rachel Hall, holistic dentist from Brisbane, Australia. Welcome to the Dental Zone podcast. Thank you very much for joining me. In today's episode, we are going to be covering receding gums, how to prevent them, how to cure them if you've got issues with this, because this is the place for all things holistic dentistry. If you want to know more, hop on over to holisticdentistry.au or check out my dental practice website, evolvedental.com. So let's get to it. Let's get into the zone and let's talk about receding gums. So what causes them and some home remedies that you can apply to help prevent the problem and help manage it if you already have issues with recession. Now, if you've been following my podcast, if you've been in the zone, then you'll know that there's a direct correlation between your dental health and your overall health. So your mouth is actually like a bit of a mirror for health and disease. And this is because the mouth acts as an early warning system for poor health. Now, your mouth is full of bacteria, and that includes both the harmless good bacteria and the harmful nasty bacteria that can cause oral infections like cavities, gum disease, and bad breath. But if you practice good oral hygiene routines, including daily brushing, flossing, water picking, oil pulling, mouth rinsing, this can help keep the harmful bacteria under control and it can prevent serious dental problems, including the advanced or the more severe type of gum disease called periodontal disease and receding gums. Receding gums is one of the most dramatic signs of gum disease. When bacteria containing plaque, that's the yellowy buildup that builds upon your gums and teeth, it causes inflammation so severe that it actually destroys the gum tissue and the bone that holds your teeth in. This can lead to your gums pulling away from your teeth, exposing the roots and the development of small pockets or gaps along the the length of the root that harbors harmful bacteria. Now, these bacteria and the inflammation that they cause play a role in diseases including things like endocarditis, cardiovascular disease, premature birth, rheumatoid arthritis, head and neck cancers, um, dementia, Alzheimer's, pancreatic cancers, bowel cancer, and the list goes on. So keeping your gums healthy is a priority as we age, not only for our dental health, but also for our long-term health. So let's get into what are receding gums. Now, they're a symptom, as, as it were, or a byproduct of periodontal gum disease. Gum disease is an infection. It affects, infects the soft tissue, the gums, and the supporting membranes and the bone that hold the teeth in place. As the disease progresses, the gums pull away from your teeth, creating the pockets where bacteria can breed and lodge that leads to an infection. Then our immune system has to fight that infection and the connective tissue, the gums and the ligaments and all the membranes and the bones that hold the teeth begin to break down. With our effective treatment, the gums, the connective tissue and the teeth are destroyed and eventually you'll end up with abscesses, um, severe mouth infections, bodily infections and inflammation and tooth loss. So what are the signs and symptoms of gum disease? Well, in the early stages, just like heart disease, most people aren't aware there's a problem. The first signs can be quite subtle, such as occasional blood when you're brushing your teeth. Now, I think that that's not so subtle. If my hands bled when I washed them, I'd be very, very concerned. But it's somehow in our psyche that it's okay for our gums to bleed when they brush. I don't think that's okay. So first signs are 
bleeding when you're brushing your teeth. There can be tender spots when you're chewing. But as the disease progresses and the gums start to pull away from the teeth, the more visual and more noticeable symptoms can appear. So bad breath that doesn't go away when you brush your teeth or use mouthwashes, swollen gums, gums that are kind of dark red or almost purple in color, gums that bleed easily when you're eating, brushing, flossing, or even like just touching your mouth or talking, teeth that are sensitive to foods and drinks that are either hot or cold, teeth that are loose or move slightly when you're eating or when they're, when they're touched or pushed on, pain or discomfort when chewing, and teeth that appear kind of longer and moved out of place. Well, what are the risk factors? Well, the most, the biggest risk factor is poor dental hygiene. You know, if you don't have clean teeth and you don't remove all the plaque bacteria and you get tartar building up, you're going to get receding gums and periodontal disease, particularly if you're not visiting the dentist regularly and having professional descaling and treatment for your gums. But there are some other risk factors that make you more susceptible to developing this condition, and they are hormonal changes. So women of all ages will tend to notice that their gums are more sensitive when going through a hormonal shift. So for young girls, this is puberty. They may have sensitive gums. So can pregnant women, women who take birth control um, around the cycle of your menses, and then women entering into stages of menopause. Those hormonal changes can then accelerate gum disease, and often in women we'll see a big increase in the severity of gum disease around menopause. Uh, it's believed that estrogen and progesterone play a role and that increased progesterone levels can cause gum disease. And this is why as women hit menopause, they have problems with, they have more dental symptoms and these can be things like dry mouth. And then if you've got dry mouth, that increases your risk of tooth decay and gum disease. So dry mouth is also a risk factor for receding gums. Diabetes. Diabetics are more prone to infections in the general population. Periodontal disease is a complication of diabetes. Research shows that gum disease and diabetes run in tandem. The infections make it harder to control. Um, the infections in your gums make it harder to control your blood sugar and the infection may increase blood sugar levels and then that in turn makes you more prone to the infections in your gums and this is then a vicious cycle. It's vital that diabetics practice good oral hygiene to prevent infections and the risks for complications are high. My patients who are diabetic I tend to see them more regularly for gum treatments than I do somebody who doesn't have diabetes. Now, if you're immunocompromised, so say you've got something like HIV or AIDS, then you're going to have a greater risk for receding gums, but so too for some patients with autoimmune conditions because you have a limited ability to fight off infections. Some of the medications that you might be on may also cause dry mouth as a side effect. And again, this can lead to tooth decay, gum issues, receding gums, infections, and things like oral thrush. I would say that at the moment, one of the biggest factors in poor gum health is vitamin C deficiency. People now have such poor diets that they are nutritionally deficient in so many things, and vitamin C is one of them. And without vitamin C, you get poor oral health, you have gums that get swollen, and they bleed and inflamed. This is scurvy. Scurvy destroys your gum health. And I am seeing younger and younger patients with severe, aggressive gum disease and when we talk to them about their nutrition, they are mostly vitamin C deficient. We address their vitamin C with supplements and their gum health dramatically improves. Smoking. Smoking is really bad for your gums. We know it's bad for our health. 
you know, I don't have to bang on, but I'll explain why it's bad for gum disease. It weakens your immune system and it makes it difficult to fight infections. It also reduces peripheral, that's the end part of the chain, peripheral blood flow and blood supply. So your gums, which are at the end of the chain, don't get enough blood, they don't get enough oxygen, and therefore they don't get the nutrients and they don't get everything that they need to be able to fight infection. And for smokers who already have receding gums and periodontal disease, continuing smoking makes it difficult, if not almost impossible, for the gums to heal. Tobacco in any form raises your risk. So smokers have twice the risk of gum disease than non-smokers. The longer you smoke, the greater that risk. The more you smoke, the greater you the risk. And if you smoke, treatments for gum disease may not be beneficial and useful because your body can't heal. Then we can say, okay, it's in your genes. Um, many health conditions, we are genetically predisposed. And that may be the case for gum disease. We do see it being so-called hereditary, not that you caught it from your parents, but your genes make you more susceptible to it. And if that is the case, if gum disease runs in your family, then prevention is key. The other thing I suspect there, though, is that it's microbiome. If your parents have got periodontal disease, then they've got a microbiome full of harmful bacteria that gets passed on to you as a child because of, you know, they blow on your food, they kiss you, blah, blah, blah. You get their microbiome. Then there's certain medications that can cause dry mouth, things like oral contraceptives, antidepressants, medications for heart disease, and that can add to your issues with gum disease. Then there's bruxism. Teeth grinding and clenching is one of the leading causes of gum disease, and it is an accelerator of periodontal disease. Uh, what happens is you're crushing on the tooth, you're overwhelming the support structures and the bone, you're rocking the teeth from side to side, and that's like knocking a fence post around in the ground, and it loosens everything up. And this is how braces work. We put a force on the tooth the bone and the gum around the tooth reshape, dissolve, allow the tooth to move and then regrow. But if you're doing this over and over for sustained periods of time, like your decades, then those teeth are pushing and pushing and pushing and the bone doesn't have the opportunity to remodel and regrow. It's constantly being broken down by the forces. So, if you clench and grind your teeth, you have bruxism, TMJ issues, we need to address that, make a night guard, reduce the pressure, stabilize the teeth, and address the gum disease to have success. And poor oral hygiene. If you don't brush your teeth twice a day, if you don't floss, clean between your teeth, you don't oil pull, you're going to have a heightened risk for oral health problems, including gum disease. So... I want you to clean your teeth. But there's a caveat. If you brush with a stiff, hard toothbrush or you brush too hard, you can also cause your gums to recede and lead to further dental problems because you are traumatizing the delicate structures and tissues in your mouth. All right, so we've understood why the gums recede, what that looks like, what causes it, what adds to the problem. Now let's have a look at how we treat receding gums. Now I know none of you love sitting in the dentist chair, but unfortunately that does mean if you've got receding gums, it has to be treated. Just wishing and hoping and trying a few of the home remedies that I'm going to recommend is not going to be enough. With the dentist or your hygienist, we have to remove and clean away the deposits of harmful bacteria and tartar that have developed under the gums. We need to support your body to switch off the infection and inflammation and to be able to heal. Now, I know if you've got receding gums or periodontal disease, then the thought of a trip to the dentist can be 
frightening. You can be anxious about it. You, and it may even be, you know, your experience that it's painful. Well, any of my patients who've got advanced gum disease, they've got gum issues, there are several things that we do in the chair to help you be more comfortable. We apply desensitizing polishes and pastes before we start. We put numbing gels down into the gum spaces. And if that's not sufficient because your disease is so advanced, we will actually use local anesthetic to numb the areas so that we can do those deep cleans as comfortably as possible. So we're going to do deep cleanings. These are cleanings that go beyond your regular six monthly maintenance clean. They involve a process called scaling and root planing. And this is where we scrape off the tartar from above the gum line and under the gum line and we smooth off any buildup from the roots. And it may be that we're going to use lasers in some cases. I refer for that because I'm not trained in, in laser for gum disease. We've got to get rid of everything that's sitting around the teeth that shouldn't be. Then I use antimicrobials. So to kill the infection, I will um, flush the areas with an antimicrobial rinse, and then I'll put antimicrobial and antibacterial gels into the pockets, and then we will prescribe those for you to use at home to reduce the bacteria and the bacteria-filled pockets. We may prescribe oral antibiotics if things are quite severe to help fight the infection and give your body a kickstart. Um, we used to do flap surgery, not myself, but the gum specialist to do deep cleaning. That's not so common now, but there is a place for it. Um, there can be times when you need bone and tissue grafts to regenerate bone and gum, and grafting can be done using natural or synthetic bone to promote your body's natural healing tendencies. Some of the things I also recommend go beyond what that is, and this is where we're looking at kind of the supplementary or complementary or so-called home remedies for receding gums. Sorry about that, haven't got my notification switched off. So what are some of the things that you can do at home to support with your gums? Now, none of this, I'm going to say it again, none of this will work if you don't have treatment with your dentist. But they can help maybe reduce some of the inflammation and some of the issues that you're suffering before you go and see the dentist. And then the other thing I would recommend is that these are things you apply after you've had your dental treatment. So things like green tea. Green tea has age-fighting compounds. It has been found by Japanese researchers to promote healthy teeth and gums. It's been found that if you drink a, a cup of green tea each day, the patients, people got decreased pocket depths, they got improved attachment of the gums back to the teeth, which means they tighten back up instead of being all flappy and loose, and they had reduced gum bleeding. And in fact, the more cups of green tea consumed, the better the results. Now, if you can find a decaffeinated green tea, that's what I'd go for. Now, oil pulling is a practice that involves the swishing of either sesame oil or coconut oil around the mouth for anywhere up to 10 to 20 minutes a day. You can do it for two or three minutes and still get great results. Oil pulling can help remove some of the toxins from the mouth to help prevent cavities and oral diseases. Um, coconut oil is actually active, um, sorry, Coconut oil is actually anti-inflammatory. It's a, a germicidal. Uh, it's a really good as just like a as a mouthwash or any other mouthwash for eliminating bad breath, which is one of the common side effects of receding gums and disease. Then the coconut oil is anti-inflammatory. You can actually gently massage it on your gums, let it sit for a couple of minutes, and then rinse your mouth. You can do a little mix of coconut oil and Himalayan sea salt, and together they're both antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory, which can help 
relieve some of the symptoms when you have receding gums. Now, my favorite, my go-to, high-dose vitamin C. This is an essential nutrient, and without it, you get inflamed and bleeding gums. So if you boost your intake of vitamin C-rich food, including origins, kale, red peppers, uh, capsicum, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, that may help to reduce the inflammation and bleeding gums. But I don't think you're going to get enough vitamin C to do what needs to be done just from food alone. So I will always recommend a supplement of vitamin C anywhere up to three grams a day just to get things kick-started. Now, aloe vera. Aloe vera has been studied. It's been used in a variety of toothpaste, mouthwashes, gels, sprays, juices, and supplements. Applying aloe vera gel to inflame gums and pockets helps to take the inflammation down and improves some of the periodontal conditions. You can take 100 milligrams a day, as, as well as rubbing it on the gums to speed up healing. Then, flossing. I know, I know, you're all rolling your eyes and going, really, Rachel? And I'm like, yes, flossing, or at least cleaning in between your teeth. So you can use floss. You can use what are called picksters, TP brushes. Now, they're actually called interdental brushes. And you can also use a water pick combination of all three floss brushes and water picks fantastic now you've got to floss smarter you've got to make sure the floss is going down between the tooth and the gum and use it like you're towel drying your back so that you can get in there and clean everything out if you just find it too hard you don't have the manual dexterity use a flosset or better still use a, an interdental brush I'd like you to choose an uh, all-natural floss that doesn't have Teflon, fluoride, and other non-stick compounds in it. Mouthwashing. Use a mouthwash. You can use oregano oil. It's really uh, amazing. It's antifungal. It's antibacterial, antivi antiviral, antioxidant, antiparasite, and it can promote healing of inflamed gums while fighting infection. So you can... Make up your own little mouth washes with essential oils. Uh, don't overdo the strengths. Um, put that in a little bit of plain. Uh, you can get the coconut oils that don't have any flavor. That works really well. And then you can swoosh that around with your oregano oil in as well. Then omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 um, reduces the what we call the gingival index, and that's the bleeding and the pocket depths, the swelling, the redness, uh, and, and, and it can actually improve. Sorry, let me just start again. So you've got your gingival index, such your pocket depths, the amount of bleeding, the, the color, the texture of the gums. Now, it studies showed that people who took 300 milligrams of omega-3 fatty acids daily for 12 week, weeks improved their gingival index. Um, Omega-3 fatty acids, really super important. We know they act to prevent chronic diseases um, and periodontitis is a chronic inflammatory disease. So you can understand why it works. Okay, so what you've got to remember is that there's an association between gum disease and increased mortality. People with gum disease live poorer quality lives, have more health issues, and don't live as long as somebody who has good gum health. Our oral health is an indicator of our oral health and wellness. Gum disease, as it progresses, will cause receding gums, teeth can become loose and even fall out. Now, gum disease causes nearly two-thirds of all tooth loss in adults over 40, and these are often teeth that don't have decay, have never had a filling or have had very small cavities and are in fact healthy teeth, but they have no support structure. You've got to find an effective treatment and that's essential for your long-term health. Now, what do I consider effective treatment? Deep cleaning with the dentist, then regular maintenance cleans every three to four months, 
stop smoking, improve your oral hygiene, and use some of the anti-inflammatory things that I've recommended. So your green tea, oil pulling, vitamin C, aloe vera, um, oregano oil, omega-3 fatty acid, mouthwashing, using your flosses and your interdental brushes and really keeping things on track. So prevention is the best way to fight receding gums and periodontal disease. Left untreated, gum disease will cause receding gums, systemic infections and loss of teeth. Your oral bacteria are associated with cardiovascular disease, certain cancers, things like dementia. So super important to keep your gums healthy. Certain medications like dry mouth can contribute to gum disease. Your hormones and hormonal changes can also have an impact. Oil pulling with coconut oil is an effective treatment. It reduces plaque and improves gingivitis. But you must get everything cleaned up first with your dentist. Doing oil pulling on its own is not going to work. Green tea help help decrease your pockets and improves the attachment. And then good oral highly hygiene, daily brushing with a soft brush, soft to moderate pressure. That's going to help prevent plaque buildup that can lead to periodontal disease. At the end of the day, prevention is better than cure. But if you've already got gum disease, then get it treated and then take these steps to make sure you heal properly and to prevent it flaring up and getting really bad again. Thank you very much for listening. I'm Dr. Rachel Hall, holistic dentist from Brisbane, Australia. This is The Dental Zone. Thank you so much again for being part of the show. If you'd like to know more, 0737201811 to book in for a consultation and exam, or hop on over to evolvedental.com.au to find out more about your oral health and what you can do to have a healthy mouth and a healthy life. Until next time, stay in the zone. You've been listening to the Dental Zone podcast with Dr. Rachel Hall. For health, lifestyle, fitness, and a great smile, get in the zone.